malo Hello everybody, uh, my <laughs> name is Dazine and uh, welcome to the next episode of the Right Wing Reading Club. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at the Bronze Age Mindset Part 4, which is A Few Arrows, which is actually a pretty fucking kick-ass name, not gonna lie. But for now, we'll just go around and introduce everybody that's on the show tonight. First, I got my co-host, Tiger. Go ahead. Um, lightheaded after that throat singing, but hello, my name is Tiger. <laughs> Uh, I'm reading Bronze Age Mindset with everybody else. I make films, and you should follow me. What's your at? Oh, yeah, uh, at TYGR Productions. You guys should just know that by now. Come on. Like, come on. Now. Damn, come like... on. Light. How's it going? Dark. My worst enemy. But, yeah, no, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm light. I'm new. Uh, my, <laughs> at... <laughs> my at is a uh, edge of the lights, and uh, you know, I don't want to get blow my uh, horn too much or anything, so I'll keep the introduction brief. So we'll just see how it goes today. Gotcha, gotcha. And our first return guest of all time, my boy Neck. How's it going? Cheers, Tiger. I'm Nick. My ad is uh, at tape your webcam, and you know that's just the advice I'm gonna give you. For the little intro. Nice, nice. All right, so now comes a part of the show where we just kind of go around, same order as the introduction. Talk about what your like first takeaways were from part four. We did the same thing with one, two, and three. So for me, my favorite part of part four was definitely like the last part, where he just has like these mini paragraph statements that summarized the entire book. It reminded me a lot of like Beyond Good and Evil out of Nietzsche, where it's just a bunch of aphorisms, right? Like you can pluck those out and apply them to a multitude of situations and they're all applicable. It felt like those are the sorts of things that you can like make into like tweets or something. Like they seemed very straightforward. Also, his critique of feminism is great because he's sort of been like shadowing why feminism is an empty ideology or why it's ineffective throughout the rest of the text. But this is where he just kind of like goes in on that theme and makes it very explicit. And finally, my another part that I really liked was his analysis of modern military institutions. Because I know like I've been DMing a lot of people and they're like, I don't know what to do with my life. I want to join the military, but the military is so dumb. And he's like, you know what? Modern military is really shitty. But if you're very focused while you're doing that, then you can get a lot out of it. So yeah, those are my takeaways. Tiger? So my biggest takeaway on stanza 66, page 169, a man of great charisma who can seduce the people with a wild spirit and break through the rule of the pervasive bureaucracy media complex is our best hope for the immediate problem and maybe our only hope. Now, doesn't that sound like Trump, Bolsonaro, Berlusconi, like all the uprising populist movements are coming out? Guys with great charisma, seducing the people with wild spirit, not just like chugging, plugging facts and like doing, you know, stereotypical campaign ads but really speaking to the people the, the energy of the people and then they're just directly going through the the fake news media with the, their their messages and whatnot that's that's my biggest takeaway right there nice law um and on to life what are your takeaways yeah all right so my takeaways that you guys haven't already said uh, definitely my favorite part in here that really stood out to me uh, was in Stand of uh, 68 on page 174. And I'm just going to read this real quick because it's got a lot of power in it. And uh, so he is talking about in this one, he's saying that the, the normality of human life is that low and kind of dirt life, which uh, we are all kind of returning to now and we're just coming back to the mean. But he does say the ultimate justice, because he's talking about social justice, saying how it's a, such a dumb term. And he says, here is my vision of true justice, the justice of nature. The zoos opened, predators unleashed by the dozens, hundreds, 4,000 hungry wolves rampaging on the streets of these hive cities. Elephants and bison stampeding, the buildings, buildings smashed to pieces, the cries of the human bug shearing through the streets as the lord of the beast returns. Manhattan, Moscow, Peking reduced to ruins overgrown by vines and forests. The haunt of the lynx and coyote again. The great cesspool slums, Calcutta, Nairobi, all the fetid latrines of the world covered over by mudslides, overgrown with thick jungle. This is justice. And uh, 
yeah, just reading that, <laughs> it really, I don't know, makes you think that there's a lot that needs to be done to get us out of uh, where we're headed to. But I don't know. It also kind of gets your blood pumping, really, when you read that. Absolutely. Nice. Nick? Um, I just, I really like the, the fact that it's basically uh, a bunch of white pills, right? It's a bunch of white pills on, on uh, well, in terms of like uh, normie institutions. And, you know, you, you get people who like, who have genuine hope in, in, in these things, like, like, I don't know, like Fuentes or something, right? And then, you know, but there's people who obviously they black me about, about all this, but he kind of, tur he turns it, rap turns it around. Right, and of course, and of course, says it's you know it's it's uh it's part of the uh it's it's part of the process. But of course, at the end of like um, what was it stanza like uh sixty six um like he goes he goes you know if you you don't have to uh you don't have to you know go insane with the uh. You know, with with the with the edgy politics, if you if you don't want to, you can you know you can stick with uh, you know with with the normie stuff. And, and then he goes, you know, he basically just just goes oh without further ado, like the, the whole next bit is for the for the for the real, the the real uh, revolutionaries. Yeah, um, he's like the Ann Coulter's or Pat Buchanan's, right? Yeah, yeah. I also like that because he even says in that section, it's like. If anyone while you're running your campaign asks you if you've read BAP or your follower, explicitly deny that you have. <laughs> because you'll never be able to win public office if you do. And that blends into something else in page 171 where he says, he's talking about, I, I assume the alt-right. You don't see these people marching around in hotel bellboys uniforms with a sauna ran and talking about the Jewish question and this other kind of role play. Like That does not play well to the normie eye, to the public eye, to sway votes. Yep, yeah. and that's, that's people like Nellen or, or Little, which exactly. are just fucking jokes at this point. Yeah, it's just LARPing. Didn't Nellen dox that that Ricky Vaughn guy or something like that? There's a whole bunch of stupid infighting amongst the absolute most idiotic on the right. Yeah. And like that wouldn't surprise me if that was the case. <laughs> that reminds me a lot of monkeys throwing their own shit at each other, except shouts out to uh, the person who was doxxed. That sucks, and I like his posts too. Okay, so let's just dive into uh, part four. First, sixty-three. This, I, this I freaking loved. Uh, just what the freedom of women means in practice is the domination of mankind by the demagogues who can rally the lower orders of the spirit. Liberation of women means freedom and power for, for financiers, lawyers, purveyors of comfort in and outside of government, employers who whore out your wife and daughters. This is a. Uh, this is how I feel towards modern feminism as well, is it's kind of like empower yourself by becoming another consumer unit that works and then buys worthless products. Yeah, I mean, if you look at women now and you actually just kind of analyze what their ideal is, it's just like this strange parody of men and not a good one in any sense. And it really is self-destructive. Yeah, because like... And we talked about this on the show before, I think. It's sort of like the Jordan B. Peterson take where it's like men and women are different for a reason, right? We're not both just like consumer unit number 243, right? They need to be distinct in order to create something beautiful, which is an authentic relationship. I also like uh, this, and this foreshadows the rest of it too, is the idea that the liberation of women when combined with democracy creates like absolutely nonsensical fact situations like crazy shit happens when women are liberated and there's a democratic system yeah women's liberation from the perspective of the, of the elite all they wanted to do was just the the point was to add more economic units so they could tax more people and then also give the so now that there's no much like stay-at-home moms kids go to daycare in the schools for, for their parents, right? Yep. No, the state becomes the teacher. That's all it is. It has nothing to do with hating on women themselves. It's all about the power structures that caused it in the first place. Hey, yeah. but it's all worth it because uh, all hell big line, right? <laughs> it's all about the line. Give me the line. The line that goes up 
and the oh. quality of life is counter to that. Because uh, there's this idea that like uh, there are, as long as we continue to produce enough economic units, it's also the justification for immigration in Europe, right? Like actually, yeah. this just happened in uh, one of my two T's, the people that I help out, like brought in this thing. Like, Why does there need to be what the fuck? <laughs> Why does there need to be immigration in Europe? And we like, and the teacher was like, because look at the uh, population pyramids, right? Germany isn't producing enough children, so they need to import more immigrants so that their line will continue to go up. Because heaven <laughs> forbid that the line reverse, right? Yeah, it's like we can come to an equilibrium, and if things get too bad, then you're going to start having more kids. And uh, you don't need that. I, I fucking hate GDP worship. I really do. It's, it, it's simple minded. Yeah, it really is. I mean, he talks about this. He talks about these kind of nerdoid people who worship numbers, who worship kind of, they're all thin, middling intelligence. They can't really have any deep takes or anything like that. But they think themselves smart. And they think that intelligence is really, really important. And they idolize it uh, when in reality, they don't actually have any. They just think that they can do because they memorize facts or they can plug some numbers into an equation. Yep, because true genius and true science is apart from the sort of science that we think of today. Yeah. It's about experience and spur of the moment and feeling, not like, here's a number. I'm going to plug it in here. Holy shit, I am a genius. None of that. <laughs> yeah, he says oh, there's shit. no great discoveries has come about because uh, somebody plugged numbers into an equation. I mean, that really had never happened. Actually, this is a different trend that he doesn't touch on, but is interesting. Uh, if you look at scientific discoveries... Now, it can feel like a lot of it's slowing down, like we're not really progressing towards anything. And even people on the left and such who are worshippers of science really do, they, they agree with that. Uh, well, any sort of discoveries or advancements have all been made by teams. The last time any individual made big discoveries was like a, quite a while ago. And you don't know any of the names of these people either. They're not heroic. They're not... Uh, Old, they're not interesting. They're just faceless kind of Chinese workers <laughs> who make weird chemical discoveries. I mean, that's what they are. It's, yeah. awesome. it's not like I, Blaise Pascal, like, you know, creating his theories and everyone knows Pascal and like he has his theories on God and whatnot. And he's like a super well-known figure. It's just like, here's NPC number 3468. And he found that if you pour this chemical into this chemical, this chemical is created, which can lower your risk of this really weird, obscure disease by 12%. And you know, they're ants because you could take that NPC 123 and replace it with NPC 124 and you wouldn't know the difference. That's the thing. Anybody <laughs> could do that. That's why it's so unimportant and so stupid. And actually, like, people were uh, aware, like, like these research uh, teams, I have been aware of this before. You've got that, uh, who's, who's that scientist? I, I, I won't bother to look up the name, but there's this scientist who, whose name is actually like a pseudonym for this uh, this research team in France, right? Uh, and you know, and that's just that's just the, like the beginning of the transition from um, uh, you know from individuals discovering anything to just a bunch of bug men. Yeah, you know they had to still uh, let's say like revitalize um, the whole like illusion of oh people you know people discovering things where. To, to kind of slow down in the eyes of the public the transition from, you know, from like scientists to, you know, just people messing with, uh, well, people messing with, with, with chemicals, you know, just you know, take, take one from the shelf. Chemicals yeah. or numbers or any of it. I mean, really, yeah. you look at these people, even our, you could consider them our side. He talks about them as Spurgs or autists, the people who are saying, Oh well, STEM. You know they all. They all. They're all based and red pilled, and just leave me alone. Let me do my little fucking calculations. Like no, that science was never meant for comfort. It wasn't meant to be this little, you know, hobby or anything like that. It was meant mm -hmm. to be a, a, a an act of gazing into kind of the divine will, seeing deeper into the real meaning of things. Now it's a big fucking joke to see you know how fast we can get to the robot that jerks you off. So just a quick interjection, because Kantbot like DM'd me about a month ago and was like, "You need to read Hammond." So he just like sends me this link of Hammond and stuff. He's like a German philosopher. 
uh, Tiger called him like the best writer of his age or whatever. And his thesis is basically that like uh, the enlightenment is actually the opposite of an enlightenment. It becomes the blind trust of logic and reasoning over like the divine light of God or that which like guides mankind to a higher purpose. And it just resonates with me a great deal when you have this science that's just like science for the sake of science, right? Like there is no divine glimpse. There's no divine notes in the discoveries that originate from this sort of bugman science, right? It's just like MPC-43 discovered chemical compound 47. Oh, wonderful. Instead of things like, oh, we discovered why the things we do are important or like this is what hormones do. This is section one of that book where it's like, why the fuck are there no researchers looking at how hormones work? It's the black box of organic life, right? Except for Jay Campbell. A boy! <laughs> Jay um, Campbell is, is great. I'm just going to put that out there. Just reminded seen, me of that whole, like, Hamlet idea. So. You, you've, yeah. Oh, we get, well, we're reading Hamlet eventually, right? I already have the text, but it was, like, 45 petrodollars, so I don't want to... <laughs> <laughs> force people to like drop 45 i might just uh scan sections that i find important and upload them oh well that might be cool on our minecraft server because we would never imagine copyright violation oh yeah no we'll, we'll we'll use white uh white wool and black wool and we'll just we'll just <laughs> make huge like massive pdfs tapestries. of it yes <laughs> tapestries of the text inside of our minecraft, minecraft server <laughs> i mean yeah. tapestry course, stories are pretty trad so they are <laughs> Of course, not direct copies Modern either. Modern. It'd have to be just uh, inspired by the works. Exactly. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, you, you know, you can really get away with a lot in your Minecraft server. It's, it's quite it's quite unbelievable. Um, I'm going to turn real quick because I think we've unpacked the feminism idea just a little bit. And also, I'm really happy that we touched on the science concept. Basically, the point that he makes at the beginning of 64 is that the, uh, the natural type of mankind or our natural organization so in nature the vital part of mankind would rule and in the beginnings of many societies it does military brotherhoods of men rule and physical force as well as use of personality charisma draw the rest in orbit around those who possess those in the highest degree and this is all sort of like in the blood of mankind right and then he recognizes these two factors that make the opposite happen like why is modernity a thing why do we have democratic institutions instead of city states etc cetera, etc cetera. so first of all the success of these brave men in securing the conditions of life and comfort for the rest of the community so i think that's super relevant where it's like we don't need to worry about where food comes from at all we don't really need to worry about shelter or anything like that so all of these have been provided for by the um, the excess of technology so it's much easier to divert ourselves from our natural instinct of organization in society. And then second, which I love, the ascent within this peacetime of the priest, the shaman, the schemer, and the matriarch. And then he calls the matriarch later on the great earth mother, originally some kind of half-human, half-cockroach creature resplendent with horrid eggs like big Amazon centipede. This seeks to reabsorb you. And then, of all things that you blame for the decrepit times we live in, feminism and the liberation of women is both the proximate and the ultimate cause. So, yeah. I just wanted to know what people thought about the ascent of the priest, the shaman, the schemer, and the matriarch. Because for me, at least, I'm like, I'm a fan of the shaman archetype. And I feel like there isn't a place in modernity for the shaman archetype. So I'm not sure why he puts this as a negative thing. I have a quick question. Is my mic working? Yeah, it is. Okay, yeah, I just switched over to my computer. Sorry about that. Oh, nice. Your quality is beautiful. Good. Uh, <laughs> but as far as the shaman archetype, I think what he's trying to say is originally, right, the warrior was the highest good. Uh, and then if you look at a Native American especially, there is a place for the shaman. And I think he even says earlier that uh, the priestly and the warrior can rule uh, in plural. Like, they can rule together. However when the shaman decides that he's more powerful than the warrior and starts to put his force over the warrior's force, that's when that youthful virility starts to get extinguished. I mean, it's very obvious with the matriarch. It's very obvious with, like, the merchant, uh, which is the point we're at now where we're, like, we're living in the, the age of the matriarch merchant. Uh, Usually but... the sh oh, Go ahead, go ahead. No, no, continue. I oh, no, I'm just saying that... that uh, the shaman in and of itself or the priest is not bad or anything like that. It's just when it gets to the highest rung and puts away the idea of the warrior as the highest good, yeah, uh, that's when it becomes an issue. 
building on to that, usually the shaman is an is a much older individual, right? Right. The, the, the elder, you know, the one who's who's kind of ha- maybe not halfway out the door, but he's much more interested in the spiritual, like the the ethereal, the esoteric. Whereas the warriors in the in the here, the now, the temporal world, and when the it's it's like the old trying to, you know, d- compress, depress, oppress, put their foot on the neck. Yeah, of of the youth, and th- there needs to be a balance, you know, yin and yang. I guess would be a crude metaphor for that. Like you need to have the youthful warrior along with the, the knowledge gained by the elders. And when one of those are in balance, you get problems. Yeah. Uh, right now we live in an age where obviously the, the, you know, the, the bookish shaman priest matriarch side is, is, is gaining power. I think he actually states this later. It's the men of religion and those of power have many interests in common and can rule together but it often happens that the men of power become decadent and let the state drift into the hands of those who can't rule and who start to resent them for this abdication. So I think it goes back to the first point, right? right, Where it's like society becomes decadent enough where there is no longer the necessity of the warrior class. And after the warrior class can sort of like fade into luxury, like this just like reminds me directly of feudal Japan, right? Like technology is introduced there's enough profitability like the samurai go from being an actual warrior class to being like oh now we have a hierarchy of who shuffles which paper right right yeah and now japan is like full of herbivore creatures who kind of scuttle around in their you know (laughs) one by one homes i mean it's really sad actually one by one they are they're they really in minecraft that's how they live the whole um the whole the whole balance thing. I don't think it's as simple as that because you've got the like the the, you know, the shaman and the and the merchant. They're all contingent on the warrior, right? I mean, you can get on with your little paperwork business, but uh, you know, as long as um, you know, as as long as the warrior is there, making making sure that the that that the well being that you know, the health and well being of you know of your son and his son and his son. It's a uh, you know, is guaranteed, right? And when and when you and when the the shaman and the merchant take this for granted and 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 let's say knock the warrior off his um off his podium, you know, they, you know, they don't realize we're gonna they're, we're gonna sink with him eventually, right? So it's not the you know it, it's not it's not really a, a two way balance, you know. Well, it's interesting because the warrior himself actually gives credence to the shaman to the matriarch it's only because he does what he does and sets up a place where you can be comfortable uh only then can these people become ascendant and actually challenge his power uh and i think when he describes later in the book when he's talking about the the piratical race that lives in the tropics and comes and essentially trolls the fucking lesser races uh there is no room for that kind of ascendant power of of mercantilism of matriarchs or even the shaman it's it's all subsumed and there really only is the warrior in that uh, to go back to the earlier point where i think at a certain point the warrior no longer becomes a necessity and it is that point where which the warrior will usually transfer power of the state to another like uh another class entity yeah, yeah another entity uh, or another archetype because i think he's, he's using archetypal language here right like the priest as an archetype the shaman as an archetype the schemer etc right obviously there's differences within each culture and whatnot but the archetype exists archetype, exactly. so the archetype can be right. transferred from culture to culture but i think it's like the first point where it's like when there is enough material wealth there is no longer the necessity or valid risk of conflict so like to address uh next point where it's like well who's keeping your sons and daughters safe it's like if there is no threat to keep safe against then the warrior class just sort of falls in upon itself right mm-hmm. well, yeah what's our that, threat I now guess kind of, i guess it kind of bleeds into oh, the the whole overarching concept of own space too when you have all this own space and there's no threat what does the warrior do Exactly. So there's no necessity for the lawyer's existence. There's no concrete other against which he can organize, right? Well, there's no there's no space. Uh, you know, once you've once you've owned all the space, and and there's no and there's no threats. Once we've gotten to basically the point that we're in in our in the society that we live in, you know, like like sure we've owned the space, but like, 
but then we basically just like seceded ourselves from it, you know, just moved in, moved uh, deeper inwards and given uh, given it up to, to basically no one. Well, yeah, that's really why it's so interesting that there's there's no space that's not owned, and as soon as you start to carve it out, you're immediately crushed because once you get that foothold, then really, uh, then there's not a lot that they can do to stop you. He gives that one anecdote about a Japan uh, where the uh, samurai, after realizing that the bureaucrats had become really decadent and weak, they just took back power because they had all the force. They had all the energy. Yeah. Here's the other example of the British importing a certain ethnicity into a community. That ethnicity the outnumbered Tamils. the other, right? Yeah, exactly. Yep. And then the outnumbered ethnicity is just like, well, we have guns. So it doesn't matter if you try to outvote us. We're just going to take away voting. Like, and that's the warrior spirit, right? And like, that's how things ought to operate. Right. But that's to like uh, to trace out this second point a little bit more. So when men lose this warrior archetype within society, Bath states that quote women become also very aggressive once real and relaxed manhood atrophies. If you imagine that women in the Muslim world, for example, are sweet and feminine, they are hungry viragos of iron will. The feminist Muslim will be a figure of much importance among them. The men in Arabia will turn gay. Vietnamese or Chinese grandmother has her knee on the neck of the son-in-law. Thus everywhere we see that the very comforts and safety produced by the best men leads to the usurpation of society by those parts of the human spirit that are oriented instead towards a different kind of life. That everywhere the mode of the yeast wins out, and usually wins out very quickly. Also, just more homin junk at the bottom. It is an act of complete insanity disguised as logic or reason presented in the most absurd legalisms about supposed rights. The modern socialism, the expansion of the power of the state, the hypocrisy of political life, all of this is to be attributed to participation of women in political life. Also, are we all together in the fact that human re like human rights, that's a complete spook of a concept? <laughs> it's a big joke. You? Who's going to enforce it? It's not real. I know it's not even real. It's not even a full concept. It's just it actually is just a big joke. I feel it's all those terms. How you sold it. Go ahead. I feel all those terms have some basis in either like CIA, OSS, like just push through, you know, secret society candidates like that to just create a a, a false reality in a sense. You know. I bought recently tweeting about social sciences only exist because of CIA operations. Yeah, like I, I don't doubt that human rights. You know, was was a term by the CIA. Like when you list human rights, such as like life, liberty, pursuit of happiness, like there can be some debate there. But there's like the the blanket term of human rights. Like I feel you could just leverage so much with with that without explaining anything. You know, there was this poster when I went to like uh, I was at university today working in some center. There was a poster that just said, "Culture is a human right." What the oh. fuck does that mean? Is it like you have the right to be able to like circumcise children or keep your women in a hijab or like whatever culture is? It's a human right and therefore it cannot be touched, right? Like, no, what they're saying is that you have an you have a right as a human being to have access to your culture and maintain it as long as you're not white, really. That's I mean, what I was about I, to say is like, well, then why can't I just marry as many people as I want and be a Mormon? Like, <laughs> move Mormons to Utah. Spooks. <laughs> Go west, my son. Go west, <laughs> my son. But yeah, uh, human rights are actually one of those kind of nerdoid things, I think, uh, where it's really a reduction and trying to put everybody on this same kind of weak level. Uh, it's, it's bringing down the people who have no need for human rights. The only people who would ever have a need for human rights are those that are going to get stepped on because they're weak or their culture sucks or that they're the losers, essentially. Yeah, and they take... Uh... You know, they take society as it is for granted as well, right? So, yeah, you know, that that that's where it really stems from. Like, there may have been, you know, there may have been in previous times some sort of some sort of uh, concept of human rights, but this would be nothing like what we see now. You know, you'd have you you know you would have the right to basically just defend you know, defend yourself and yours, right? Something I don't and that, like, that, about and that's how where it ends. Yeah. Something I don't like about the whole human rights discussion is that it completely distorts and like destroys everyone's perception of what happened during the colonization of like you know South America and whatnot during the 15 1600s, right? 
everybody's view of that is completely distorted because the whole, uh, oh, the human rights abuses by the Europeans. Yeah, that happened. Yes, I'm not denying that. But also, look at all the cool stuff they did. Look at all the great, amazing things they did. They connected the worlds. It's like Cortez was a rapist, a killer, and a conqueror. And then, you know, through the view of human rights, all of that is saying, oh, God, you know, you the can... worst human being. But that is like all of those can be a virtue in and of well, you can hold two. You can hold two opposing opinions at well, the same time. Box, but yeah, but even at the same time, like you go and kill a bunch of guys and take their wives. That's cool as fuck. I mean, it just is. You <sighs> sit at your computer and, and drink wine. You're gay. I mean, but come on. Well, and you, really, can, you, you can hold. Human you can... rights only exists in order to like place male action and like the ability of the superior male agent to exert their will and influence upon the world. Right. It exists literally to put that within a box. That is why it is there. It is an anti-individualist sentiment, right? Like if you're a state, you have enough lawyers employed to be able to put whatever you want to do within the language of human rights. If you're an individual, if you're like the African warlord that Bap discusses at the beginning of the text, you yep. A, have free agency, true free agency. You're not a Mark Zuckerberg that just has a stack of government-backed money. You can go and kill someone and take their wife. But that would be- In a Minecraft. Situation. In Minecraft, in your Minecraft server. No, in real life, server. you can. You can't. If you, yeah, no. That's the and thing. You can. That's why it's so like at one point it's so exciting to think that that is real, a real possibility, and that's real human life that you can obtain. But at the same time, it's also so crushing to think that just compare even the life of an African warlord, somebody who should be, you know, that is generally considered by a lot of people around us to be below them, right? We've gone past that. We have human rights. We have all this technology, all this progress. You know, fuck that, really. <laughs> what do we have? I mean, we, we are have, worse than the guy. We have, we have Minecraft and porn. I mean, it's <laughs> it's ridiculous. We are below the guy who like uh, who wears like the donated Hannah Montana shirt and doesn't know what it says. Right. We call them fucking primitives, and you know, here we are living like little bugs. We don't have well, to. We well, really don't. It is in some way. I think there's a point to be made as to like to what extent can the agent express like that sentiment within like a Western society like the United States, right? Like it's one thing to say like you can live your life, but it's another thing to say like uh, how exactly would I go about leveraging that power within an American system, right? Like, how would you? How would you go about doing that? That's sort of like the larger question. And I think actually this goes all the way to the end of the text. But he talks about the ability that um, there should be a group of men, perhaps 100 around the world, that will do a descent. So they go down and they uh, overtake all of the aspects that are perverted and wrong about society. And through that, they wield power. So like a sort of like a, a BAP cult that overtakes pornography and all of these terrible things like mass media, mass music, things like this. They understand it's evil, and they use it to kill the Leviathan. And the Leviathan is what he refers to as modern degenerate culture. I've actually thought a lot about that. And uh, another part of that is not only do you have... You just cut out. <laughs> light went I dark. finally got light. Uh, <laughs> actually, before... Because you, you can't out, escape it. No, start again. You might cut uh, out. Like, oh, sorry. Uh, where did I cut off? Like just do it. Have. <laughs> just, just oh do yeah, it. So, <laughs> sorry. Run it back, so, boys. <laughs> yeah. So to uh to say that I was said I was thinking a lot about that concept you were saying. Uh and not only do people nowadays, you can actually think of it as partly an advantage, uh, because we are so bombarded with all of this kind of degeneracy, if you want to call it that, uh, all the time that it's hard to escape. And so you kind of get a full frontal view, and then you can go really deep into it. But the main thing to remember is that you have to throw yourselves into this pit of darkness and then maintain your ideal. Keep your eye on that star the whole time. And then when you come out, you've already conquered all that. It's like, uh, you know, Hercules going down into Hades and coming back out. That's really what we have to do. Rescuing the spirit of your father from the belly of the whale. <laughs> kill the oh, dragon! Run. <laughs> Just kill the dragon! Kill the Wa dragon! Wash your penis! Yeah, <laughs> clean your fucking room. Stun your dick. All right. Uh, I also want to talk about uh, what happened to Sam Harris. Come on, Sam Harris, dude. I don't fucking care about Sam Harris. 
Get the fuck out of him. Bitch Who's ass. What do you think Sam Harris's deadlift is? The two? Two. I was about to say two. <laughs> <Body> <laughs> um, so I want to go back to this women thing. Like, the question is, they say, <laughs> gotta keep nagging the women. Huh? <laughs> but he talks about that uh, if women are to, or like the full political enfranchisement of the female class is to blame for a number of negative outcomes then it's not just a one-way sword if that makes sense like it's a it's a spear with two tips is how he puts it he also points out that women after all can still even in the most debased condition be made to call upon their deep passions by a great leader they voted for hitler mussolini and many others with great enthusiasm the enemy who freed them has made use of the great weapon he's increased his power immensely and introduced a war into the house and life of every man but this enemy also made a gamble and i believe ultimately a mistake because women more than others will set their bodies on fire with passion for a savior and be willing to abandon the fear and love of comfort on which the modern state depends. Them more than others out of a wild and stupid enthusiasm. So it's like this idea that uh, the, um, the liberation of women is a double-edged sword. sword. What? The, the liberation of women is a double-edged sword. Is that exactly. exactly. Yeah. Like we can, like uh, the movement on the right can also use the liberation of, wom of women if you if it's the correct figure with the right charisma and the right rhetoric and the right, you know, the, the right energy that an individual has. Mm -hmm. Well, it's and not like, the liberation of women. It's the ability to give women to vote in a democracy. And since democracy is so retarded, you can use it against them. And also just to clarify, cause I think this is super important for BAP. When women were politically enfranchised, they were made unfree. Like it's, right. The political enfranchisement placed them within a political prison, forced them to play a political game, which distances them from their true source of power, which is passion. They're kind of lucky in that, or like before, they were kind of lucky. They didn't have to worry about politics, which <laughs> is which is dog shit. Don't get me wrong, politics is terrible. It's a bunch of games. Well, anybody who about... says they like politics is either lying or they don't actually understand politics. I and mean, women don't actually worry about politics. They just, uh, you know, they vote with their passions anyway. You know? Exactly. But the thing is, the left has created the rhetoric that addresses those passions, right? So why is the right so incapable? Or why, like, I also don't want to refer to the right as the GOP because that's just like finding the worst example, right? But why? Yeah, that's not the, the right. right. That's just the that's just the left in, in slow motion. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. The left but in slow motion. With, with, why is, uh, why is Roy so incapable of like capturing women's passion, capturing women's enthusiasm? Like, I think to a certain extent we saw this in the Kavanaugh hearings, where there were like the Catholic mothers took out the sad where it's like your son, who has worked hard his entire life, could be completely destroyed by a woman making an unsubstantiated accusation upon him, right? Mm -hmm. And I think like. That hit a nerve. Like that actually hit a nerve. That was some like effective rhetoric in the political establishment, which I'm not yeah. used to seeing ever. <laughs> Have you ever seen those women who go up to the the Congress people and they just scream in their face? And like obviously they are contradicting themselves. They're falling over their feet. If you were to actually engage in that argument and think about what you're saying logically, uh, it doesn't make any sense. But it doesn't matter. They'll just stand there and yell because they have that violent kind of. Re retarded passion almost where they just don't even care what the hell they're saying and they're just going to go for it and you can use that that's just, the thing. Just, you have to just di you have to just divert that into the direction you want it to go right? yeah yeah imagine if you had a bunch of women screaming that you know all, all people with you know you everybody has to take a mandatory t-test and if you fail it you get killed i mean it would just it would be amazing I, I I watched a video where there wasn't they weren't even saying anything they were literally just screaming into a person's face. Yeah. There was no there was no argument no language they weren't even using words just. Ah, ah, ah. Powerful and brave right there. Yes. The words yes. of BAP that is a chimp out. <laughs> yeah, we need more chimp outs actually because it works. <laughs> we need. <laughs> it, it I mean it does to an extent. We need more chimp out. <laughs> Need more Jim Bell. <laughs> it's something else that Bap does, while in the in this whole in this whole thing is he doesn't address the um, the issues of of uh, of degeneracy, right? That's that stemmed from female liberation, and that and that has allowed him to basically uh, not paint it as as something that's 
uh, that's inherently negative by basically just ignoring those 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 obviously like negative factors that basically everyone addresses. Those are obvious takes, right? Um, and and the introduction of and has painted well has managed to paint the introduction of women into democracy and stuff. And, and, and and democracy itself as a as basically just a game changer, just a different just a different field to um, to continue you know conducting the fight, let's say. Right. Absolutely. Also uh just to build off of what Nick said, and they will help through the entirely retarded mechanism of democracy to elect men of glamour and charisma who are our only immediate hope against the machine that runs our garbage world. Trump, for all his hesitations, is only the beginning. He has shown the path that so far as women is concerned, the mob is also a woman. Now imagine a man of Trump's charisma, but who is not merely beholden to the generals, but one of them, and able to rule and intimidate them as well as seduce the many. Like, that's... <laughs> it's really weird because I just read The Republic for the 15th time. And it's like that's uh, it's exactly how you're supposed to have a uh, dictatorship emerge out of a democracy, right? Because you have a distinct separation between the interests of the elite and the interests of the many. The many elect a single representative who has great charisma. That individual with great charisma then punishes the few for the grievances of the many, and like that's the iteration of Trump. But he wants a he wants a better Trump, right? And I, as I think we all do, but. He wants a Trump that's not simply beholden to like military interests or even financial interests, but is one of those people, right? Yeah, I mean, we got the Grocky brothers right now. I mean, he says this. Right? He says right now we're dealing with Grockies, but Napoleons and Caesars are sure to follow. Exactly. I, I wish James Mattis just did a tank march on the Capitol Hill. <laughs> just while they're in session, just ordered every Abrams in the United States just to, just to start firing rounds at the Capitol. <laughs> Remember what? Remember the what, best uh, chimp out of all time. just chimp out with Madison. Yeah. Who? Somebody did that in the Soviet Union. The last, the last guy before Gorbachev. Uh, what was? Oh, yeah, he just went in and killed the whole legislature, right? <laughs> he just, he just started firing tank shells at the legislative building. Actually, can I elaborate on this for a second? Yeah. Uh, Bap, Bap talks about this uh, a little bit, and it's one of those underlying themes that he never explicitly states, or maybe he does in one of the earlier parts. Um, but you can kind of draw from this that the world that we're living in is run by a bunch of fucking morons and not even morons, but people who are dirt, people who are that bug mind. And if you're going to consider yourself to be a noble person, to be above that, right? Crushing a bug for you should not be that hard. Uh, it's those, it's that effect of, you know, you listen to the people in suits because they're in suits. And I've been saying this for a while, but actually that book, if you read it all the way through and then... You, you, this is a theme that you can pick up, is the people in charge are not as bulletproof as you think. I mean, take that however you want. Uh, but in terms of they aren't solid, they aren't unmovable or anything like that. Not at all. No. They're, no. Really... They, they're not powerful they, whatsoever. They, they are powerful, but only in the extent that we give it to them. Yeah. Uh, it, it's really actually kind of funny once you kind of pop out of that notion that oh the journalists they're fighting for free press and the government has your best interest in mind and they are the ones protecting you or even you get past that and then you also get past the mindset of well they're malicious against us they hate us and they're all powerful no they just it's like petty shit that they have against us and uh really that can be dealt with they're uh, simply inept. Go ahead. They're not malicious. They're simply inept. There's also, they they kind of are. <laughs> yeah, that's like, it, that's where the where it's like it's not that they simply have power. It's that like th we have this assumption that the experts and the analysts at the State Department are somehow like competent. No. Nope. Like go on to poll and literally go to the Syria watch thread, and there is better analysis going on in there than this white papers that are being circulated through the State Department on the Syrian situation. <laughs> He explicitly says that when he's talking about the CIA. Exactly. He talks yep. about the CIA and how the CIA is so nonsensically incompetent, even compared to just like 
4 chan is better at doing mimetic warfare than a million dollar public institution dude that's actually a sick idea decentralized intelligence agencies you get a bunch of autists oh, you, you pay them you pay them and then they, they'll do better intelligence work than your actual intelligence agencies you guys remember the straw hearings i mean this is pretty hard political versus we're doing esoteric stuff right now but if you remember they had the phone conversations and it's like two fucking high school girls texting each other that's what it sounds like yeah. i mean yeah i remember that yeah yeah, oh, yeah. It, it's like these are the people that are in the upper echelons of our world it's like <laughs> these people deserve to be thrown in lockers i mean they're yeah. fucking, it's so ridiculous uh, yeah it's they probably binge watch Game of Thrones or something, you know. They do, yeah. Like just mags, mags. Yeah, it's like that level of of soy and stupid. And that's why this is, this whole thing is why I love, I absolutely love memetically that the NPC meme is is catching fire and like getting like mainstream now, because it just describes everything perfectly, and you, they can't deny anything. It's right there in the meme. That's right. These people are just getting memed, and like you can't go, no, I'm not an NPC, because it just makes you look like a little bitch. And an NPC. <laughs> and an NPC. <laughs> and this whole this whole crushing and boxing actually leads kind of well to onto onto well onto the next part and and a bit past it, right? And this is you know this is j just past the the female liberation section. It's basically just advice for um um for people who 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 don't want to. Um, I know, I guess who do, who who don't want to uh, explicitly, you know, be pirates yet. You know, yeah, the, 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 the yeah, the, the guys, uh, the the guys who to basically just uh, just just push the message slightly in in, in normie politics. You know, the guys that are gonna get. Uh, Get into positions of 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 quote unquote power in the next you know five to ten years, right? And it's you know it's it's advice to um it's advice to basically just just ally with the with the with the sort of normie tier, not you know not like neocons, right? Obviously, they're not they're not allies uh, to any extent, but you know figures like Trump, you know stuff like even stuff like Anna Coulter, right? You know, if if you, if you have people like uh like that in power, you have the correct you have the correct environment for for whatever necessary next uh, next direction you you, you take um you, you take politics and, and society in general in, right? You're right. You're right. And uh, I mean, he says this where Trump is an ideal in, in a lot of sense, but uh, he's a stepping stone. I mean, really, that's what his purpose is, and his purpose has been fulfilled. Uh, I've said this before. People get really upset when they're saying Trump's not doing what we wanted to or anything. And I'm saying it's it's relevant, ultimately, uh, because what he's already done, the magnitude of him being elected and the kind of fire he's lit in people just by him getting there. He's given people confidence. And uh, that doesn't just go away. He's instilled he ideals that are not explicitly his. He's uh, done so much compared to every other politician in the past two years. It's it's absolutely unreal. And it's not even because of his actions. That's the thing. It's not even because of his policy or his reforms or anything. No, it's just because he got elected. And then we kind of assigned a role to him. And then we kind of fed off that energy that we gave to him. Uh, and actually, really, just the exact same way that you were saying, Nick, with if we got Ann Coulter, Pat Buchanan in there. Uh, it's just a step in the right direction. No, I mean, democracy won't solve all our problems, and I think he states this, but it's a good step in the right direction. It's better to have that country of uh, happy sheep, like he said, than like a rat-filled nest. Yeah, yeah, like you won't, you know, you won't get anywhere. You're pulling a Paul Nealon or a, no. or a Patrick Little, no. you know. And unless you're willing to go and you know really take action which isn't even advisable currently uh because you're just going to go to jail and nothing's going to get done um then no the best wear out currently is to go through that political process but never ever say that it's sufficient that's the thing that people get stuck up on yeah because they, they'll accuse you of uh of cucking right but you, you know you, you're basically just using you know you, people who who think you agree with them Right. But then, you know, they're, they're, you know they're, yeah, they're stepping stones. They're not exactly what you want. But you're not going to, you know, 
But the alternative is what, like, you know, you, you join the, the, the free presenters or something? And then start convincing them to, to start marching in, uh, <laughs> in, Washington, in like, D.C. or something? Seriously. You're not going to get anywhere with that. No, no, you're not. But you or will sure. with, with determination and, uh, and uh, holding those ideals at the highest. And we're going to make it. That's why I'm so white-pilled about the future, is because that spark has already been lit. And I mean, I'm sure everybody knows this, is that once you get these ideas in your head, they don't just go away. And this is in a lot of people's heads. Yeah. It's not like it's pittering out. It's just going faster, and it's okay. growing more and more. Here's the thing. When people see, when people hear truth and see truth, they don't, they don't go back, right? Exactly. So it's just, it, it's just constantly... You know the bad the bad guys are gonna lose and we're gonna win just by just by attrition, right? Well, it's just that there's that accelerating force that's putting it in our side, and also the people who would go back. Because I remember at the very beginning, people were saying like, "Oh, I want to return to normie life. I'm so sad." Well, those people are the fucking nerdoids. I mean, yeah. they were never gonna be the men of action ever. They they were never gonna be the ones who got stuff done. Yeah. And so, really, you never needed them in the first place. Masculinity is about decisiveness. We took the path, we will ride the path, right? And you're going to have a good time doing it, too. That's it's, really the oh, ultimate it's thing. A, it's been a great time. Oh, yeah. Good ride. I actually it's realized a, very recently that when I, like, wanted to kill myself and things moved very slowly, like, a week took, like, forever. And, mm -hmm. like, this past week, when I've just been power posting, a bunch of happenings, classes are easy all this stuff like i feel myself moving forward like this week disappeared in a snap like mm -hmm. it felt like 24 Same. hours and it went from monday to friday and i don't want to be like oh that's because you know you're like on twitter time or what it's like it's because i'm actually happy to be alive and that's yeah. just the way it goes right like <laughs> when you're having a good time things tend to go a bit quicker but well, I just when you're busy be the case exactly just when you're busy you're... when you have something to do that's not like sitting on your ass life goes by very fucking fast and you better you better watch yourself because you can waste a lot of time and you can if waste you a lot of been, your life go ahead sorry oh that was it oh no if you guys have ever been sick and you've laid in a bed right and just yes. staring at your ceiling it takes forever for you even to get past a second but then you go on a run you go out in nature you go and live a little bit or you have a conversation with somebody that you really enjoy being with or you go and do something that's could be even life altering, like an important event. And that snaps right by. Yep. And and you have those, you kind of have like small adrenaline moments in which everything seems to slow down. But everything else, the the menial stuff flies by. But the important stuff, the stuff that matters, that gets hyper focused on. Because you're not wasting your time being a dredge. And, and it's really, it's really an amazing thing. Every uh, man, every man needs to find deep within them. The goal, a goal they want to hit, a mission, right? Something that's long-term lasting, a vision and a mission, and then just go for it. Just do things to build up to it. That's and this right. is at that point as well earlier in the text where it's like true masculinity's power is a man with singular focus. Yeah. And this is also the reasoning behind his hesitancy to just make a blanket claim that everyone should get married and pop out as many kids as quickly as possible. Because those who marry and those who settle down early are unable to focus upon higher goals. Like, it's just like it's very difficult to run for office or to make a massive change in the world when you have two kids and a wife, right? Like, I think that's a universal truth that we can all agree on. You can be yeah, happy. You, you can, you can be, you can be happy. You can have a good life. You can like definitely be fulfilled, but in terms of greater world impact, you're probably neutered in senses. Neutered, but severely like it's harder, significantly harder. Like neutered makes it so that it is impossible. And I don't want to say that it's impossible, but it is much harder, right? It's like yeah, eating five yeah, guys yeah. five days in a row. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> Stop, mate! <laughs> Come on, mate! You're getting, you're getting diet mogs right now. You're fucking, you're, you're not getting neutered, you're just getting BPA'd. You know? I'm getting flashbacks to Nick Fuentes being like, why am I so sick? And then the next day, he's uploading, like, this is my second McDonald's meal of the day. <laughs> and everybody Christ. in the replies is like, do you know what gut, gut microbia are? Do you understand? He's like, LOL, yeah, no big deal. Bulking season XD. Like, you fucking mongoloids. <laughs> Neck, do you get a drink and fries, too? Uh, no, you know, fries are too much carbohydrates. Uh, 
Okay. All right. Got your mind. Got your mindset right to there. Honest, to be honest, what you should do is get two burgers, throw away the buns, Ooh. and eat. Yeah, burger yeah. With a fork and knife, crumple them into a ball. Yeah, that's fist what I do. Them into your mouth. That's what I'll you do. Just... Yeah. So okay. He's, good. He's a fucking genius, folks. We only bring guys, the best and brightest onto this show. Look, this message is brought to you by Anti Grain Gang. Okay. Okay. Hey. <laughs> I'm gonna have teeth for ages. Hey, hey, here's something to think about. They always give you bread at restaurants for free, and they make you pay for the meat. Just think about Holy it. Holy shit! <laughs> Actually, that's a really good take. Also, oh no, dude! I literally like Nick sent the photo of his breakfast in the group chat, and I literally took my bagel out of the toaster and threw it away. That's exactly. Gay. Why are you eating yeah. bagels? Hold up. Why are we eating bread? We don't need it. No bread. No bread. No oh, yeah. bread. No, well, it's, bread. it's been about no a month bread. since everyone's made fun of my diet, so let's go. <laughs> what is your diet? Just just I loosely, because we don't want to take up too much time. Pescatarian? Yeah. That's, well, that's, that that's, that's fi- it's vegetarian with fish, right? Spot on, yep. Okay. I yeah, eat so- meat. <laughs> <laughs> so- I eat my meat, I beat my meat. <laughs> So anyway, so you've, got, you've got all this enthusiastic talk, and it's basically you know that's that's just the energy that this that this is why this this whole bit of um you know this whole bit is my favorite part of part four, right? Because it basically just just puts you in this, this big enthusiastic um uh mood, you know, just just you know, it's just a, it's just a big old white pill, you know. It just shows that we don't all have to you know go out and uh, build cabins in Montana, you know. We're gonna make it. That's the best part too. You don't just read it and you're like, "Fuck, time to kill myself." You're like, "Hey, I can live!" Yeah, hey, time, to, time to kill someone else and take his wife. That's why I've never liked escapism. People who are like, "Let me just run away. Leave me alone, please. I'm just gonna be my little hovel." It's like, "Fuck you! You're not gonna do anything. You're just running away. <laughs> you're a loser. Fuck you're gonna get God eventually." Yeah, you're go- they're gonna come for you, and there's gonna so be nothing you can do about it in your little ancap fucking shed. Your cuck shed. I mean, really. And cap shed. And cap shed. See, I was never, I, I was never an amprim guy in terms of going out deep, but I do. I, I want. I don't want people near me. Like, well, that's not. Know. That's not an issue. But to to check out of society fully and just say, let it all burn. I'm not going to even like, do anything about it. Like I yeah, sympathize you with yourself. I sympathize with the yourself. Kaczynski Bros, but I cannot endorse. Well, it's Chad Ecofash versus the Virgin Anne Prim. <laughs> this is true. There's no synthesis to that dialectic. That's exactly what I said. People are, yeah, exactly. You were like, what's the synthesis? It wasn't you. It was uh, something right wing, I think. He was like, uh, what's the synthesis between Anne Prim and Ecofash? It's like, well, there isn't one. Right. Because Anne Prim is just like fantastical LARPing. And like really wishing that everything will simply grind to a halt arbitrarily because of like my peak oil or some shit. And then Ecofash, like, here we go. Ecofash is actually like, let's centralize the government and make very concrete policy objectives and make them accountable and make them have to be achieved on a timetable. And if they don't, people get shot. Like, that's how it should operate. Here we go, boys. (laughs) Yeah. The primary like uh, criticism of ecofash that I uh, that I see is basically just just the whole eco being uh, being like a being reduced to a secondary objective, right? And if you just guarantee that it just doesn't happen, you know, then the, then then the then the pine tree boys can uh, it would catch on between them, right? I think there's a lot of like hypotheticals when it's like. How will you establish yeah. an eco-fascist government in the United States? And I think a necessary step to that occurring is being the revitalization of the American art movement. And a central part of the American art movement, as you can see by literally the landscape painting in the rear end of this show, like that's our background, is that there has to be an embrace of nature as a valid end of the government, right? Like the state has an obligation to protect not only its citizens, but the world in which their citizens live. And like the the function that makes fascism accountable is not voting, but rather a militarized mob. And with the revitalization of an American aesthetic built around nature, the mob will be more than willing to rally around with weapons and with infinite force against a state that does not respect their right to a clean and healthy and beautiful environment. You actually can take this even further out to what BAP says, and it's really maintaining or making that culture that worships beauty. 
above all else, really. Because then nature falls right in its place. Humans fall right in their place. Architecture, sculptures, art, uh, music, anything you can think of. As long as you orient it towards beauty and towards something higher being divine, in a sense, everything else will fall into place. And if you look at around and you say, well, what are the issues we have? You can separate the good things and the bad things distinctly into categories of beautiful and ugly. And like, I can think of very few things that would fall out of that category distinction. Aesthetics are everything. Ideologies. Once you, Aesthetics once you understand, over ideology, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, how, how, how something looks and makes you feel is much more than the ideology. That's what college Republicans. Like, I probably agree with some of their points, but I'm, no way. They disgust no way. me. They yeah, disgust they, me. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I don't want to follow you. I don't want to be a part of you. Well, like, yeah. I, okay. I probably, agree, in all honesty, I probably agree with college Republicans more than BAP on certain issues, but I would follow BAP like, hundred times out of a hundred times into war or politics or anything than I would those college Republican inbreds. Yeah. Probably the Brad. fat of face and the fat of soul are those that create the college Republicans. Imagine John McCain in a room like wanking into a little mason jar and then wheeling <laughs> over to it, wheeling over into a little pe- pouring, pouring his little like, like half de- deceased nut into a petri dish, and then like lighting that with a Bunsen burner, and then a little homunculus forms. It's like, it's like, a, it's like a half half born Charlie Kirk. It's like, Feed me, and then, and then like like government agents walk in with tongs and like put it in a little like oh like baby God. carriage, and they're like, it's okay, Charlie, it's okay, you will change the world someday. That little carriage has a has that's, like a... that's gonna be the Antichrist. That's Israel's savior. Right there. <laughs> I don't know. I'm nagging so, on Charlie Kirk so much. I don't. I don't mean to, but he's just the first thing that pops in my mind. Have a look at him, man. Dude, okay. Put, if Charlie Kirk had a better haircut, everything would be fixed. Charlie Kirk lifted weights. Did he? No, he doesn't. Look at him. If, if he lifted weights. Oh, I thought you said Charlie Kirk lifted weights, and I was like, show me the vid, bro. I want to see this. The little carriage already has a little Stephen Crowder. Uh, it's kind of. Kind of uh, socialism yeah, would would change my mind. A woman sign. would be riding and would be, you know, bringing him around the White House, right? We live yeah. in a society. Yeah, you cross dress and be the mother of the Charlie Kirk Camoculus, right? <laughs> All right? Now the picture's been fully fleshed out. We're going to pop back to the reading real quick. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I want to go back to explicitly the part where he talks about 4chan against CIA. So that's 72. Uh, I don't know what page it is. I have no idea. Um, he makes so we there's this claim that people make that like the CAA, uh, the CIA, the CIA makes like its claims of failure. Like they publicize their own incompetence to make people think that they're weaker than they are, and that's just nonsense because they're absolute idiots. <laughs> yeah, I think they're so, actually like if they think that if they think we're idiots, then they won't know we're actually idiots. The CIA is playing forty chess because they know they're losing. Exactly. <laughs> So he describes the CIA as being full of Mormons and various cripplets who put on a high wasp manner, full also of soccer moms and neuters. The intelligence services are in fact quite incompetent, despite their considerable power. Both can be true. I won't talk about speculation or false flag attacks, but it's without a doubt that they've tried to get into the meme business and have had units dedicated to this kind of visual propaganda. We all saw their efforts and laughed. I think the best threat that the right presents to the system came from something like 4chan, which showed it can be an intelligence agency of its own and far superior to what the formal spooks do. The memes put a spike of fear into the hearts of all the constipated spooks. Because it's like, you can just be a group of autists that actually have your, you have your finger on the pulse of the culture. And that's something that like the CIA simply cannot replicate, right? They could try with their memetics division, but it will fail. It well, was. everybody saw how it went. I mean, it was a joke. It wasn't. It wasn't authentic. It wasn't good at all. It was totally lab manufactured. And I mean, I, everybody could tell. I really want to study memes because something comes from the heart. Something comes from the heart from these people that make good memes. Well, meme in and like we've kind of distorted it. Maybe not us, but in the normie sphere, it's been distorted as just a joke uh, or something like that, or kind of this weird categorization that everybody understands what it means. But if you ask someone to describe it, they can't give you a clear definition, but a meme in and of itself is that spread of information that spreads very 
quickly and yes. deeply and it, it impacts people in a lot of ways uh yep, this is and really yeah that's that's one right. of the most important things i actually have a recommendation read propaganda by burke uh that is you'll learn a lot about memes in that book it's an old book but it, it tells you everything is that edmund, you edmund, edmund burke yeah edmund burke that's right i remember actually when i was like I don't know. Like I was a little kid and I read a bunch because that's you know what autists do. So I was like twelve and I read this like I think it was like the Satan question or like the Lucifer problem or something like that. And it had a definition of meme and like the definition of meme is like the idea that quickly spreads in the manner of a virus, right? So a meme isn't just like an image macro or a joke. It's something that spreads quickly and resonates immediately, right? Oh wait, like when you, sorry. When you... One second, one second. I, it's not Burke. I just had a fucking tarred moment. It's yeah, by exactly. Edward Bernays. My bad. Bernays. Yeah. 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 I was, yeah. I was Bernays. like, yeah, no, not was... Edmund Burke. I just <laughs> shit it out for a moment. <laughs> I was like, why is this? That's the meme. It's the meme. I'm spreading uh, bad information. I was like, why is yeah, the conservative that's... figure from the 1700s no. talking about memes? Oh well. I don't know. Bernays. Okay. All right. Edward Bernays. On my read list immediately. Oh, that's I think that's Freud's nephew, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Ah, okay. Oh, yeah, this guy. The guy who created consumerism. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Mimetics. 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 That's, yeah, mimetics. That's, that's uh, the future. The politician and, and side which best employs mimetics wins, regardless. Yep. Okay, also, I want to touch on this because we're we've got about 45 minutes left. But I want to touch on what um, BAP sees as like effective organizations. And that's oh, okay. 73, because he talks about like nationalists must present a healthy alternative to the eternal rule of ugliness in our time. Promote nature, beauty, physical fitness, the preservation of high traditions of literature and art. So it's this idea that it's like you can't make this like LARPy ass march around thing, right? <laughs> and be like hey what do you think about the jews like that's not a thing you do do a jew walk idiotic. like but there is this alternative where it's like a pro beauty pro physical fitness pro nature it's also interesting that nature is the first item on the list right and that's what i was talking about earlier in the defense of ecofash right where it's like if you promote these ideals and show them to be intuitively valuable to the like lion's share of the populace, then they will intuitively follow those ideas, which are inherently beautiful and good, right? Yeah, okay, like how, so if go ahead. This this is a quick point because I like I like hearing lights thoughts and things, but that's why if you just tell people to lift weights, everything else follows. Yep, he has a section on this where it's like this whole left swole thing is a fucking meme because as soon as you become swole, you stop being left. That's right. Yeah. Except for Joe Rogan. Dude, he's slamming so much cannabis into his veins, he defies all rules. <laughs> oh, I know. No, and he, he's like hyper capitalist too. And he's probably like compromised in some senses because he's a blue check, but he's just believe it there. It, dude. Right. right. Jamie, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, imagine if some kind of penciled neck loser comes up to you in a stall helm and is like, hey, have you heard about the Jews? I mean, no, nobody's going to fucking listen to him. <laughs> But, but if some 10 out of 10 ultra Chad comes up and is saying, hey, you want to you want to go save some trees and, you know, maybe kill some glow in the darks uh, on the side. I mean, shit, you're going to listen to him and you're going to listen to what he has to say. Because uh, the aesthetics are good. It is the aesthetics. It's 100% the aesthetics. Go. You can actually look at the suits thing, right? What I said earlier, if people listen to the people in suits because they have suits. And I mean, even though a lot of those people are gross old and maligned they do have a certain aesthetic about them that kind of demands reverence demands importance and you can have that but you can have that even more because the competition when we're going up against are well the left are full of a bunch of blob freaks and then the right is full of a bunch of old men i mean we have that youthful energy and then we can be that turbo aesthetic that just destroys everybody else turbo aesthetic yeah it's it's really turbo i'm not even joking because you're just accelerating beyond everybody else it's also interesting you're leaving the current standard the current standard for an 8 out of 10 or a 9 out of 10 so low so low right now. holy shit it's so low like when you go to a university and you're just like you look around in an area where there are 50 to 80 people like i've been lifting for not even a year and I'm like consistently in the top 10 to 15 best looking people. I don't even dress that well. I put on sweaters and like dark jeans. 
and like decent shoes. Yep. Literally just like an eight or a nine out of ten automatically. It's not difficult and it's really important. Like for folks that are like, oh, you know, I should spend my time like reading more political analysis, reading no. more philosophy, it's like spamming the TL. Your time is better spent both for your own sake and for like quote the movement, however gay that word may be. Yeah. If you simply work on making yourself more aesthetically attractive. This whites. I tweeted that earlier, actually, because uh, I said that you can't, in that book, it's one of the earlier sections, but uh, it's essentially saying that any development of the mind or the spirit before the body is just a joke and is coping. Uh, it's a joke because really you need that physical foundation and anything else that follows from it will be more exalted. But if you don't have that physical base prior, you really have nothing. You and need I mean, three things. You need a basic knowledge of what you're talking about in terms of history, ideology, or whatever, aesthetics. You need just the, the base knowledge of that. Then you need to know persuasion. And then you also need to be attractive, right? And that's well, just, that's, that's like effect. minimum requirements. And then yeah. you need to do that times 100 to be the top dog. Yeah. And I mean, the thing is, the good thing is within this group, there will be the hierarchy that forms. and But the thing is, nobody's going to have an issue with it. People no. will challenge, and and then that's normal. But it's not going to be this petty infighting, this petty kind of uh, jealousy or anything like that. Because everybody is on the same level. level. They yeah. understand that to get to that top level, you had to work to get there. And But you didn't do it in a slight and kind of mischievous way. You did it the same way that you got to where you're at. And also being, you know, there, there has to be followers in a sense. There has to be like second yeah. guys you know there has to be the, the movement the deputies our movement in the past uh, has uh, had a big syndrome or a symptom of whatever with having too many chiefs and not enough indians uh people trying to play that oh i'm going to be the next adolf hitler uh, and they just kind of larp around and then they don't even think that you know maybe you can just be some guy and that can be meaningful in and of itself uh, you don't have to be or you won't be most likely the next Hitler, but that doesn't mean you can't help him come about. In Minecraft. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Minecraft server, you know, you can like elect and stuff. Oh yeah, democracy in Minecraft. Yeah, I'm just gonna gesture at democracy for the feds in the back. Um. So I just thought I was clicking through, and I got to the the end of that book with the chunks at it. You know what I'm talking about like the the very end the very end like the last I would probably be the last two pages for the folks with an actual paper copy and also this is where he explicitly states what we were referring to earlier any man who improves his body through sun and steel will drift away from the modern left a program of decrep decrepitude and resentful monstrosity they know this and are afraid Once you go sun and steel, you don't go back. You really don't. You're like, wow, I feel good, actually. Why? <laughs> <laughs> like, for once, I feel good. Huh. Yeah, it's like, for once, I... Uh, all these people, they have this joke. It's like, oh, I want to die. I want to commit suicide. They have that joke, and it's actually really sad if you look at it a little deeper. And uh, a lot of them aren't joking in that. But, uh, again, most of them are these kind of flat, blob, meaningless people. And a lot of their problems can be solved straight by lifting. Your, your physique should have meaning. Yeah. Everything should have meaning. Well, art should be meaningful, and your physique should be art. Boom. It's Retweet. I mean, I, I, I mean, I would consider myself like, you know, like transitioning from the fat blonde, you know? Progress is there. Oh, yeah. You know? But you know, but it's but it's you know, it's definitely possible. It's it's a, it's a viable thing, right? Oh yeah, most um, definitely. It's an intuitively rightist project to improve one's physical attractiveness through lifting weights. Like it's an inherently rightist project. It requires like obedience to figures of authority. It requires respect to previously established knowledge. It requires extremely strong work ethic. It requires structure in the life. It requires structure in sleep. It requires structure in relationships. I actually am a big fan of the theory that lifting is not simply good because it's hard to pick things up and put them back down, but because the recovery period between making those things happen 
has to be formatted perfect and like analyzed right you can't live a shitty life and make your compound numbers go up right unless you have just god to, unless you just have god tier genetics and only like 0.0001 percent of the population does so exactly. good luck and if you do then shouts out to you eat that ice cream chief damn yeah. <laughs> right for jesus also like if you're on trend discount everything we just said <laughs> <laughs> I just love stud tweets that are like, I just poured this entire gallon of ice cream into my blender and drank it. This will turn into muscle. Maddie's you mad. <laughs> but actually, yeah, going back to your uh, original point, you have to have a certain level of self-confidence and almost to the point of vanity. And not in the way that a lot of people seem to skew vanity as because self-appreciation and self-respect of the body doesn't necessarily have to be vanity in the sense of, uh, you are unnecessarily vain because the only people who really are vain to a fault are people that are undeserving of that uh, admiration and even self-admiration. And you can do it in a humble way, but that's also kind of implicitly a right-leaning position, not necessarily vanity, but uh, appreciation of yourself, being self-confident and wanting yourself to get better, looking for that improvement of yourself, not trying to drag everybody else down to your own level. Yes. Um, also, I want to make there's a really good chunk here that discusses like why the modern left or the bug man archetype would load that which is beautiful so readily. This is going to be a big quote, but I'm going to just start it. The bug man pretends to be motivated by compassion, but is instead motivated by a titanic hatred of the well turned out and beautiful. The bug man seeks to bury beauty under a morass of ubiquitous ugliness and garbage. So much of the Pacific and the pristine oceans are now full of garbage and plastic. This garbage is flowing out of cities built on piles of unimaginable filth. The waters are polluted with birth control pills and mind-bending drugs emitted by obese, high-fructose high corn syrup guzzling beasts. Then, of course, there is the ugliness of the people, and it's only getting uglier with the crowded, unhygienic new cities of our age, populated by hordes of dwarf-like zombies that are imparted, imported for slave labor and political agitation from the fly-swept latrines of the world. When I or my followers post powerful, beautiful images of male models of unbelievable vitality and youth, our enemies gnash their teeth in envy and hatred while we are exalted and expired. Like, the where's the lie? Inherently the good. There's yeah, the I mean, he's, he calls that part of the world bio trash for a reason. I mean, it's not hyperbolic. If you have ever been to those places, uh, he puts it in very poetic and uh, I'd say borderline very beautiful terms, even though he's describing something so ugly. Uh, it's true. <laughs> it's not being uh, mean-spirited or anything like that. It's an accurate analysis of these places. And what's interesting about this passage is he doesn't even need to say, like, this is why beauty is better. This is why, like, garbage is bad, right? Like, these are intuitive things. When you read them, you can feel clearly in your blood as bap would put it like in your blood you know which one is the desirable you and picture in your mind right away like filth bad beauty good actually it's very that's simple the people distinction that he talks about at the very beginning because he says i don't care if this offends you i don't care who's reading this book because this book is only for a very select few people and they'll get it if they read it and if you don't get it then it wasn't meant for you yeah like you don't you don't need to explain why beauty what why beauty good because uh, like the whole the whole rationalizing everything is you know it's just it's just a, a completely new invention by the by the yeast man you know anybody who needs to ask why something is beautiful is not beautiful and never will be and will never even experience beauty that's why reductionism is a disease everybody <laughs> Reductionism is a disease, everybody. I wanted to bring up this um, uh, this hot anti ethno state uh, take and what was, was this a, like? It six... was a good take. The... Where is this again? Uh, I... Are we doing a Q and A today? The... Or yeah, we just yeah, I just hit the uh, group DM getting. Zach, if you want to find it, I'll, I'll talk about it, and then you can say stuff about it if you want. Oh. No, just I, I, I don't need, to, ahead, I, I don't need to find it. Um, because I, I, wanted, I, I wanted to point, you know, whoever's, yeah, 
Let's sing in English as well for um for this bit. No, it is sixty nine. It's it stands at sixty nine. Nice. Yeah. Um, Go ahead. And it's uh, it's it's basically just um, just just basically just a thought about um, about the whole ethno state uh, mindset that that's uh, that, that's that's kind of a thing in 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 the U.S. Uh, most this most applies to the U.S. Right, mm-hmm. where, where you I mean, you've, you've taken over the whole country, you know, the whole country from from whatever natives were present at the time. Right, then you've let in the whole world, you know, and now and now all you want to do is basically just run away from from, from your problems and be and and you're asking them nicely, you know, uh, just okay, I'll I'll take I'll take this little corner, right? <laughs> Please leave me alone. You can you can you can have the rest of it, you know. I know my ancestors conquered all this, and it's you know, and it and it belongs to me. But I'll just seclude myself over in this corner. And I'll secede. You know, that's, you know, that's, that's, that's the ethno state mindset and that's weak and, and it's appearing in, um, in, in, in well, it's, it's not really a thing in South Africa because it's in, in, in South Africa, like they know all this land, if they were to give it up, they're giving up all these, all this gold and diamonds and all these resources. Right. And this, excuse me, this stuff belongs to them. Right. It's, 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 it's rightfully, um, it's, it's rightfully versed and we're not going to, we're not going to just give it up to the. You know, to the to the uh, to the invade themselves off in their little corner, right. right? Which is why the which is why was it the Fiji that was taken over by the by the military? Yep. Yeah, the natives just you know t- took the whole place over, right? Because they realized that they have the true power, and this land and, and the land belongs to them, right? They don't need to establish their own little ethno state. Right, because the whole place is very ethno state. They can kick everyone else out. There's two things, and then and then, but then I will pass it on to whoever else. The first is uh, Anglo tradition. For some fucking reason, has this notion that everybody has to play fair, and that we are playing on a world stage in which everybody is an equal actor, and we all play fairly together in the sandbox. This is not how it works. It's a well, zero sum game. U- look how the UK is now. It's yeah, like- exactly. And it's that's where you get when you play fair. That's the thing. That's when you get when you treat everybody else as an equal actor. And the second thing is with the ethno state idea, people have this idea that if you fill a country with white people, right, just doesn't matter where you're from, you're going to be good to go. Imagine if you filled that country with fucking the college Republicans, right? <laughs> you would get soy country. You would not get the ideal place you're hoping for. You need that. I mean, the ethnic homogeneity of a country is good, and you need that, like bar none. Nobody's disputing that. However, to say that that's sufficient is incorrect because you will get the same uh, spiritual morass and decadence and degeneracy even in those countries, and you're going to get the same problems. You need a higher ideal. You need that higher ideal, exactly. You need that rare type of human culture that worships beauty, that looks upwards instead of fiddles around in the fucking poop. Yeah, I can really see the Anglo like a like a mindset of playing fair above all uh, above all else. You know, I, I have I have uh, like a, kind of normy tier lefty friends because I wouldn't have any any friends in the setting that I'm you know in the place I live right otherwise, right. And, right. and, and we're talking about like let's say like the Kavanaugh thing, right? and 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 the and the lefty friend of mine would go on about you know the Republicans are, aren't really playing fair, but because they left that Supreme Court seat uh, empty when they could have filled it, and they you know and and the previous guy was a centrist, and you know it's it's uh they're not they're not really playing how they should, they're not really playing by the book, right? And and, and you know the correct response to this is yeah you know fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> right? Exactly. I'm an illiterate caveman. I don't even know what a book is. Grove don't know what book is. <laughs> there you go. Fun wood. Smash on that. Drink too big, Court. Plug <laughs> like beer drink. Plug <laughs> always like beer drink. <laughs> Guys, I'm a big fan. What is going on with? What's what's the hot meme right now? Is it is it still NPCs? Because like Grug is something that's eternal. That always NPCs be dead. NPCs got killed by uh, who by was thoughts. it? Yeah, 
So is, is it? Are, are we just? Are we on a low period right now? Nothing's. Boom, really boomer got killed by thoughts too. Thirty-year-old boomer. Oh. Yeah, I saw a fucking boomer cosplay from a Twitch streamer the other day. Yeah, that's the one I was talking about. <laughs> Woo! Fucking ridiculous. Uh, video oh. games, right? Where are we dropping, boys? <laughs> I think shoving people in lockers should be the new meme. Dude, I'm, I'm just new meme is uh, is the people in politicians whenever you meet them in the street in Minecraft. <laughs> in Minecraft. <laughs> the people in political power haven't been bullied or have gone or haven't gone through rites of passage. That's what's missing. Yeah, seriously, we, we need to haze them. <laughs> we don't have a rite of passage in society anymore. There's well, no like. There's no like. It's just like, hey, you're 18. Here's everything. It's like, no, you well, need to, I, I, you got to earn that somehow. I feel. If there's I a think that's of undergoing hardship in order to require to acquire all of the rights of an adult in Western society, then you can't maximize the production of consumers, right? Because there's a majority of people that won't be able to undergo those rites of passage, yep. right? And you yep. don't. Well, the, maybe not. Them. Maybe not even a majority. If we just if you just have you know better parents or whatnot, but like a sizable amount to where like yeah, no, I want my money. The no, line there, there is a rite of passage to an extent to get into end up our echelons, but really what it is is it's like do what's been done and don't do anything that's against us and just continue this kind of ugly culture. I mean, yeah, it, there is a rite of passage, but it's kind of flipped on its head to where people who there's no struggle involved in it. It's just kind of submission to get to the top. That's what I mean. Like you don't. It's not like here's a wolf. Kill it. It's like <laughs> take these tests and get a high number. And if you do, like we'll let you into college. We need yeah, to. Exactly. We need to break open those zoos. I'm not joking. Like a like a was it like a like a physics teacher of mine or something was going on about exams being a rite of passage because they both in the same way that um you know that like hunt the bear was was a rite of passage before. Um, right. uh, oh my because God. because they because they both have uh, fear in common, right? You're stressed out during during your exam, and you know, to to, to, to some extent that that may be correct because it, it is you know it, it is the rite of passage of modern society, right? But it's, but but, it, but it's nothing in comparison to the old, to, you know, yeah, to the old of, rites of passage. What what are you proving? In terms of magnitude, that's nothing. That's nothing. Yeah, it's like the rite of passage to be alive is you have to breathe. That's just like killing a bear. <laughs> I mean, it's it's dumb. It's low. You have to fill the scantron. That's that's just exactly the same. You have as to learn to sit. Eight hours. Yeah, learn, learn to sit and read a book and memorize it. <laughs> Get it five minutes after it. And look, you passed it. You slayed the dragon. I mean, fuck. <laughs> it's, so, it's so dumb and it's so low. It's so small. Oh God! Oh. I'll tell you this: no one will remember you for filling out a scantron. Nope. Except your teacher. Like, no, they won't. Like <laughs> they don't even know your names. For like a care. minute. Hey, you listen to your eyes. Hundred of you that came in that class. With my pencil and the, the folks in power, who all tend to be of one religion, gave me a great amount of money to go. <laughs> to all right. Subtle. <laughs> I, I put those things, I scratched in the little bubbles, I got the big number back, they gave me the money. I got petro dollars from filling that out. So <laughs> And and the funny thing is it's it's that ant life, you know, you and a hundred others came to that class and they don't need to know your name. You're not any different. In that yeah. moment, there's there's no even if you get the hundred percent, right? Like people will laugh at you a lot of the time <laughs> if you get a hundred percent, because that just means you sat up in your room. And you did nothing, and you didn't live. Imagine going through all that and then being like, "Yay, I can make a hundred thousand a year!" Yay, and that's it for like forty years. You yeah, that's your life. Food. That's what you're gonna live as you're not only like you have to scare people and say, "Well, your country's gonna get worse and it's gonna get more dangerous." And it's like, well, whatever. That's not the point. The point is, you're just gonna live like this empty life for the rest of your life, even if it doesn't get more dangerous. And the thing that. Uh, that these paper that these guys who advocate for the uh, the paper pusher rite of passage would also have um have a major overlap with uh with the people who whose ideal uh, form of government will be some sort of benevolent well some sort of quote unquote benevolent AI or some sort of like technocracy right oh my you know, god you've got the you've, you've got the the, <laughs> the, right. the dictatorship of the of, of you know of the of of the gay intellectual basically <laughs> that's you know, 
but you know, and they and they, they truly believe this. You know, they 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 fall in for the, for uh, you know, for their own little uh, trick. Yeah, right. do, do me a favor. Uh, the next time you ever go on one of these videos, look at it like a YouTube comment section of anything that maybe has to do with a robot or something. They're like, "Oh my God, can they please just replace us already? We're just we're just worthless as humans." It's we're just so bad. Like Tell that's me. a fuck very common wife. thing. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, they're just like self cucking. Oh, the world would be so much better if there were no people. Jordan yeah. Peterson said that great. What do we do? Just line you all up and shoot you with machine guns? Like. <laughs> We already tried that. We already tried that. It doesn't work. Put my brain in a jar, attach a little camera to it so I can see why you fuck my wife. <laughs> yeah, like that's the type of life that these people would be satisfied with. Uh, because they have no uh, conception of themselves being good. They know at some level, deep down inside, that they are yeast. They know that. They really do. They never admit it. But they, I think that, that something inside of them tells them constantly maybe that you are worthless and it's because it's true yeah well this this is why they all mean about wanting to die as well yeah exactly and this, and this is what you know what what a lot of pe people on our side obviously infected by this whole thing because you know yeah. we all we we're all living in the in the uh the damps you know the damp space in the in the cupboard of the yeast man Right. Yeah, that warm, that warm, small, cramped space. But yeah. the thing is, I gotta give this a caveat before I before I let it just sit. Is just because you are worthless in that moment and you've got to that point doesn't mean you're beyond salvation. That's another thing. It's just because you have a maybe a run of bad luck or something, you're having a bad life or you're upset or anything. That doesn't mean just oh, off yourself and all is hopeless for me. No, I mean there can always be that strive for ascent. Uh, it's just you have to recognize that in that moment. You are worthless, and you have become something subhuman, and then you need to work to ascend, to get back to a sense of normalcy, and then go beyond that. It's also important that that process requires a great deal of labor and structure within one's personal life. Right. Like, if it was easy, then it would have no value, and the outcome would be sort of, like, void of value, right? The point is, is it's hard. Yep, and that's what makes it. And also, I think it's... I'm not really sure how I feel about this, but it would be very strange to be in a world where everyone's life was together. If that makes sense? Oh, yeah, yeah. I like, mean... It'd just be weird if, like, everybody realized full potential and was, like, working towards their highest ideal of themselves. Like, all of them. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Well, it, it would never happen, I don't think. Because, I mean, if it was that case, then there's nothing we can even look to as a point of comparison. So we can't even say what it'd be like. I have no idea. Because everybody now can be satisfied, right? And complacent, but that doesn't mean they're satisfying their highest ideals. And, and I mean, we look around now and we say that mass complacency is an issue, and I'd agree. But who knows what, what everybody striving for their own ideal would look like? Probably everything would self destruct, I think. The system is certainly not designed for maximal striving out of every subject, right? Yeah, Bap talks about that. He says those people, those simple people who push papers, who, you know, run the 7-Elevens, uh, they're not necessarily doing anything wrong as per the system. They're the only thing that makes the system work. Like, without them, it can't operate. Excuse me. I mean, yeah, they, they, they're necessary for the continuation of the system. But, like, from, from my perspective, that is in itself an evil, Right. Right. Yeah, I agree. So, I don't want to disrupt the the whole conversation, but we have we have some good questions in there that I think. Yeah, I was, to our Shouts out! I was just about to move to them. So, do you want to do the Mish the Mishima one first? Or... Yeah, Mishima has two. I love you, Mishima. You're great. Dude, he's always in the chats. Big I know he's a homie, homie, <laughs> big homie. Big right. reps for Mishima. Uh, what do you each consider to be your highest good that you strive for? Uh, I'll go first. Uh, the highest good that I strive for, like personally, or that I want to see, I'm, I'm going to do personally, because I think that's probably what he meant. Personally, the highest good that I strive for is the full realization of potential and like the constant striving for more difficult projects, if that makes sense. Like I, I very much dislike doing the same thing every day. So I try to seek out things that are very difficult for me and attempt to make them less difficult. And then when they get easier, I move on to other things. Yeah. 
High is good. What I do is, for when, whenever this type of question comes up, what I do is I look at all aspects of what I am, what I do, and I just extend those out. What if I was the best at everything I'm doing right now? That's the highest good that I strive for, to be the best in every aspect in both my strengths and my weaknesses, to find a way to heighten my strengths and to kind of have them cover my weaknesses in a sense. My turn? Yes. Conquest. Nice. Shouts out. <laughs> Next. All right. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to take like the um, uh, just well, just 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 by definition, just the realization of uh, a, a full potential of being, a, you know, of being human, right? And the which would be, you know, which would be basically, uh, you know, like uh actually actualizing my my potentials as a rational animal to the fullest extent which would be you know like which which is which is basically just living healthily um living you know, as healthily as possible procreating and basically just knowing knowing god as well as i can right that's you know i think that's that's a, that's a kind of universal thing i that's a really good goal because Things happen better in your life when you pursue godliness. So shall yeah, actually, all of the goals that were stated here fell under the same banner of conquest. Whether it's conquering yourself, conquering some mission, conquering whatever, always beating something, yeah, always RG. making something yours. Yeah, that's what I meant. Not just rape and pillage. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. All right, next question is favorite passage in Bat Book, and then also what is more important: the appeal of a higher aesthetic order and glory of the self. Or the appeal of higher being in the glory of Christ. Um, I'll go favorite passage of that book. Easy, easy. Number 35. Imagine lesbian mulata commissars with young Martin Sheen face and haircut manning the future Bergen Belsons, installations that will span tens of miles. Easy. Nice. Also, I would argue that higher aesthetic order and glory, I don't like glory of self, if that makes sense, but the appeal of higher aesthetic order and the creation of a perfect subject on earth is higher being in glory of Christ. Christ will brought full, full realization of mankind, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Godliness can be equated to aesthetics and that which is beautiful. The beautiful gives us glimpses of God and godliness, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Bad book passage. Uh, the whole thing about hormones. That's just beautiful. I love it. Nobody, nobody, nobody else talks about hormones in that way. Nobody else tries to give it some mythos. So I really like that. Uh, and then I would say kind of what Dazine said that aesthetic order and higher being are the same thing. So, and I mean, I, I also think the Christ, the myth of Christ is also beautiful and also like an incredibly high standard to hold yourself to. So yeah, basically all, uh, I would say all those are somewhat the same except for glory of self. Um, I think that can lead down a dark path if used pro improperly, but that's just my opinion. Okay, uh, so my favorite part of the entirety of that book, uh, off the top of my head, I think, and my favorite line would have to be, Hippocleides does not care. That's, yes! That's got to be it. Uh, and then as far as, what was the second question? Oh. Uh, what is more important, the appeal of higher aesthetic order and glory of self, or the appeal of higher being and glory of Christ? <laughs> that's a good question. Um, I suppose, I don't know, maybe depends on the type of person you are. I can't really give a definitive answer. Uh, for me personally, it would have to be the former, though I know many people who would have to be the latter and I wouldn't counter signal anybody who is going on that path. Like, uh, BAP says, there's a lot of paths to the same ultimate goal. Uh, there's different ways to go about it, uh, to reach kind of a, a better sense of whether it's living or spirituality or anything like that. Uh, so, I don't know. Don't have a good answer for that one, really. More than fair. Nick! The... Oh, I'll have to... Yeah. The, the okay, passage would be from, from 9, uh, which is you know, quite, quite early on, right? Uh, let, let's see. Uh... 
Oh yeah. Uh Yeah, it's, it's about Darwin. It, Darwinism is the is the is the philosophy of life of the uh, philosophy of life of the tenement and the slum of the open air work camp. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, yeah, that 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 was that was that was big and that was a really for, good one for for me and um in terms of in terms of basically just just taking the 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 blindfold of uh of science or what was left of it you know uh away from my eyes and and you know burning it right um in terms of uh in terms of what I uh i think it's more important in terms of uh glorious self or appeal to higher being glorious price these are these 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 are the same thing in my mind but they are uh, like maxim maximizing your your full potential uh and 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 appeal to to to, to higher power glory of christ these are these are these are the exact same thing that's a good answer Next, Next question. Mashima is another one. Yep, favorite lift. One for me, deadlift. Easy. Easily the deadlift. Squats are probably second, then bench, then overhead press, then uh, probably row. But like the deadlift is just so satisfying. Put a shit ton of weight on that thing. You get your mind right. You put the chalk on your hands and you pick that bitch up. And it just feels so good. So definitely deadlift. Uh, okay, I'll go deadlift number one, overhead press second, nice. row, bench, squat. Bench. I, I, squats, squats like good. Like I, I like, I like all the lifts, but it's kind of like picking my least favorite out of the ones I like. You know. Yeah. It's not like oh, fuck squats, fuck fucking bench press nationalism, none of that shit. Yeah, I love all lifts. <laughs> There's All no lift that I don't love. <laughs> it's gotta be it's gotta be the bench press nationalism. Uh for for, for fear of, of crushing your chest, if nothing else. Yes, there's the feeling where it's in your hand and you're like, this could literally like my brain, like it could crack my skull in half if I fuck up. And that's just and then you're like, Oh yeah, this is great. Yep. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> that's a real feeling. Because I'm a Heideggerian, and it's like if you stare deeply into the face of death, one becomes more authentic. And like you're literally holding like almost 200 pounds over your skull, like. And then you put it back, and you just feel that rush. You feel so exhilarated. I mean, it's the same yeah. type of feeling you get when you almost fall off a mountain. It's like you feel alive. It's awesome. Also, with the deadlift, when you're like, you're like pulling it up, and like it stop. You stop for a sec, and you're like, I'm going to fucking pull this up. I'm yep. going to fucking go, and then you're like, yeah! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> like, it's dope. Yep, there's a, the greatest advice I ever got was from some lifting podcast, and it was you need five seconds of just pulling that bar before you give up. Like, five seconds of pulling the absolute shit out of it. And if you stop before pressure is like it's incredible okay i would like that'll to make you it. blow up that'll make you blow up that'll, that'll make your back so strong oh yeah exactly no i would like to hear each of you define right of nature what do you feel is the best way to dab on these bugged out bureaucrats who are perceived to be in power according to right of nature he also gave us the page number which is 193 for right of nature i don't have the copy so if anyone with the paper copy could go to 193 and just read whatever the definition is i got it cool. in the moment Right up. By the way, weird hiker friend, I love the phrase and dab on these bugged out bureaucrats. <laughs> Hit the fucking he, eat. Uh, is it where he just says, "I believe in the right of nature." I'm bored by ideology and word shopping. The images I pokes, post speak for themselves and point to a primal order that is felt by all in a physical sense. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I, I, yeah, I got this. Um. So basically, right of nature is that which one feels in one's blood. That's what he's talking about earlier when he talks about like truly beautiful uh, patterns in nature, the flying of birds, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's that which we intuitively feel in our blood to be beautiful, or that which we feel intuitively in our blood should be pursued and acquired by the agent. 
Um, and the best way to do that is by becoming, is by like creating the societies that we feel should exist now. Does that make like you don't dab on bugged out bureaucrats by like going and doing a march in Charlottesville. You don't dab on them by like asking about the JQ in LA. You dab on them by creating close male friendships that uh, pursue nature, beauty, and strength and create the best version of yourself and make yourself and your community a better place. That's how you dab on bureaucrats. You don't do it by like bombing federal buildings in your Minecraft server or something. Like, what you actually do is you make yourself a better person and you make those around you better people and that will intuitively lead to the political ends that you want. Uh, right of nature, just reject any hyper consumer woman impulse inside of you and mm -hmm. focus and kindle your masculinity. That's that's it. As far as right of nature goes, uh, actually, people who understand it don't need it explained. Yeah. Is it's one of those things where, like Dasein said, it's in your blood, you just intuitively know it, and kind of putting it into words will never fully capture. Mm -mm. Uh, what it is it's actually easier probably to say what it isn't than what yeah. it is language is flawed in that respect yeah. many respects but in that respect yeah anti-language gang hashtag lock in yeah there you go <laughs> bitches <laughs> words, words, words 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 <laughs> You better do that at the gym Archie. while you're deadlifting. Oh, I, do. I, was I, was doing it. I was thinking like I'm gonna go lift with Tyre and just make him throat sing while he deadlifts. Yeah, Dude, God, that I, sounds I like will, so much fun. I will I will fly to where to where you live, Dazine, and I will just lift with you. Just just do that. Oh yeah, I'm down. I will up. just fly over and just be like, let's lift. And then I will just pick up that deadlift bar and go, I'm not even going to do it. I'm not gonna <laughs> you, you can't do it too much or you're going to like sully it. You need to. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 have to, I have to time it. I have to That's time right. it properly. Neck. Neck. Bro. Bro. <laughs> what? Right in nature, Neck. <laughs> you already said it. You already said it. it. Can't be defined, all right? Are you smashing that retweet button? Or you, what? you gotta. You just know it. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, maybe no, you want to challenge it. that. I ain't gonna challenge that. Want to go, bro? Huh? <laughs> all no, right, all right. Nice, nice, nice. We, we got that one down, folks. Um, also, what ought to be a proper sequel to Bat Book? Uh, I don't really a, want one. A gladius. Write it. A gladius. That says go kill. There's, there's no, there's no really easy way yeah, to say a sequel it, to that book. It, it, it's not a book that can be a sequel to. Like, there just, can be, but it just, it, it's not something that's going to be able to be put into a sentence. I mean, I, you can't really I, I put can't, that book into a sentence, can you? No, no, I can't conceive of a, I can't conceive of words that would describe a sequel. I'm gonna the do. The only it. sequel to that book is, uh, it, it, it was, it's not literature, it's action. Come on, guys. Star Wars. Ooh. <laughs> nice. Right, nice one, bro. That one, folks. Uh, would realizing mass potential one's life ever become the realization of everyone's potential? Is it necessary to the realization? Um, I think that realizing maximum potential in an individual's life will inherently lead to the realization of potential of others, but it won't be everyone's ever. Like. I just don't, and this is also the same reason he hates on Heidegger a little bit, is because like the Heideggerian idea is to be able to very clearly conceive of your place within society and authentically distance yourself from each of the roles that you have articulated and understood. Like most people can't do that. Like it just can't happen. So I don't think that there ever will be an everyone's potential realized. Like I don't think it's going to happen. But I do think that when you do it individually, it helps others because it's like leading by example, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think realizing maximum potential of one's life is um, like that. That's obviously a huge part of it, you know. 
with the whole example setting and whatnot. And I guess if you don't, if you don't have that part of your mind, the whole realization part, you could still do good deeds and still be a decent person and you could still find satisfaction. But when it comes to full realization, like you need to, you have to be a certain, I don't want to be an IQ reductionist, but you need to be somewhat intelligent in that, in that sense to like understand the concept of realizing potential and orienting yourself towards a goal. Uh, actually, the thing that you have to remember about this is that uh, everybody has a different level that their maximum potential is going to reach. And that might not even fall under the category of maximizing potential. Just everybody's going to have a point which they're going to be able to get to. I mean, that end goal in laundromat owner is not going to really shoot for the stars or anything like that. And there's nothing to be done about that. That's just how it is. Uh, and so uh, th I think this is a mistake uh, that people, not that Bat made, that, that people conceive of when discussing maximizing potential of, of individuals or of everybody else, uh, is that even as individuals, everybody has a different level in which they are even capable of reaching given the time that they're alive. And most of the time, for most people, that's not even going to be sufficient. But that's just how it is. Yeah. Yeah, maximizing your your own potential is gonna uh, it's, it's gonna rub off on others. So it's gonna it's it's gonna uh, it's gonna realize other people's potential, you know, just incidentally, right? <laughs> what are you laughing at? What no, are you no, Mishima said something that just in the chat. That what was, did he say? He said, "Could you please go off on the blacks?" <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. No, 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 no. In Minecraft, not on YouTube. In, in Minecraft. a Minecraft server. Like YouTube. In, in the Minecraft. Minecraft server, write it in wool. <laughs> write it in wool. There you go. But, um... Okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Kage Tensai has one more too. Yeah, I saw it. It's what is your ideal vision of the future in all caps. So shouts out for the energy. Yeah. Um, I will answer this because it's concrete, I guess. I've been thinking about it for a while. It's a centralist American state that will inspire similarly centralist American like, uh, states around the world. And that state's stated objectives are the preservation of beauty, cohesive communities, and the holisticness of nature. Like the establishment of nature as a national priority that is preserved and defended with the entirety of the resources of the state. It's also pro natalist. It is also pro like like increased states' rights and county rights, so that different forms of government and different priorities can be created. Like a pseudo city state ideal, still overarched by the you know three requirements of the nationalist state, one party state. Because I'm done with this nonsense. No voting. Also, all the leaders are gone through go through extensive training. From each state, there will be three to five individuals that are sent to an academy. They will literally compete to be the leader of the nation. The leader of the nation will be adept in force of arms as well as force of rhetoric. That's it. All right, nothing I can say can top that. That was just thought out and fucking written. Um... Fascists are all LARPers. <laughs> That's Heidegger, talking, boy, right there. We're uh, about the, the ideal goals, right? Yeah, like, what is your about, ideal vision of the future? Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, obviously, mine's not thought out as much as that. Um, I, I would start by just killing all institutions, which just are bloated and, you know, you don't need, basically. Just killing those off, strengthening the ones that are, you know, there, obviously. Um... And then all further institutions that are added, then there needs to be a you need to you need to have a time scale for them. So like when they're added, the IRS isn't just done and like that's it. You say the IRS exists for twenty years, and then after twenty years, all the leaders vote on whether or not it was a good or bad thing. Um, I think that can cure a lot of institutional instability in the long run. If we just don't have these mega institutions that just get hyper corrupted by little bug men that and then they just like ban you on Twitter and stuff. Uh let's think. Let's think. I like homogeneity. I like having, you know, I don't want I don't want to import a bunch of people that won't increase the quality of life in our country. So something along those lines. 
and uh, just clean infrastructure, respecting nature. You know, no fluoride in the water, none of that crap. No, no chemtrails, please. Just respecting that, respecting the human, basically respecting the human, the natural human nature, and re, re recognizing the hierarchy of humanity with that there, some are better than others, some are more beautiful than others. Beauty exists, there is good and evil. Fix yourself, strive for your goals. And we're talking about ideal goals. We're talking so, about, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we looked at the data and uh, we're just going to kill them. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but even more than that. Uh, that's step one right there. Uh, but as far as moving on from that, uh, Dazan put a very, very good analysis together. So I won't really attempt to put uh, it into that words. But I'm just going to take what BAP says as that ideal because I think I share it. Is that uh, in the tropics somewhere, there's a group of... Uh, those ultimate men, those great beings who kind of watch from above with weapons that are great and powerful. And then they occasionally maybe descend upon the bug peoples and try and teach them something. But uh, ultimately, they keep to themselves and they uh, exult in the highest and they live out the most ideal human life possible. Sounds like an ideal world to me. Neck! Yeah. Neck! Listen up. <laughs> right it's um uh, it's just a turning of 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 the maximum number of uh number of people to the glory of god so that he can finally destroy this earth and bring on a new earth and new heaven easy rapture gang lock rapture, gang, yeah. rapture gang lock <laughs> all right that beautiful folks, that was our final question and with that that is the end of this episode of the right reading club this also wraps up the bronze age mindset i'm probably going to download this file and find some little clips that we can post as tweets so that people get an idea what goes on on the show because this went really well so thank and you and we can go bad government kill them exactly and in minecraft in <laughs> no not in minecraft <laughs> i will take that on myself <laughs> So thank you, Light. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, as always, Tiger, for coming on. It was a great episode. Thanks, everybody that listens, and thanks to everybody that's listening in the future when this is uploaded. Hope you all have a wonderful night and best wishes.